I'm Yvette Yal. I'm a first year in college and I'm currently in Texas, but I'm from Mexico. I attended the Minorities Introduction to Engineering and Science hosted by MIT and I attended summer 2019 and it, well COVID wasn't a thing so obviously I went there in person. So the program was a six-week residential um, program that you would a you were able to go to MIT on campus and you would take five college classes as if you were like a college student even though we were um, during this time period that they allow people to be accepted, you have to be an incoming senior. So it's obviously um, going to help you transfer, or it helps you transfer into a college application season and also helps you with your career wise and to like what to expect in college. And it's for like minority um, students with high academic backgrounds. It's a highly selective program. Um, it's really cool though. So you get to go over there, you take five classes and throughout that you get to um, meet a lot of amazing influential people. I remember um, we'd have lectures, well not lectures, but after classes we'd have um, speakers that we'd attend. And there were people from like Twitter, from Google, it was like some physicists and um, our TAs were just as um, amazing because they would have internship work with like Nobel Prize winners and they talk about them. They were from like colleges of all over. I remember most of them were from like MIT or Stanford. It was just a lot of brilliant people in one room. Really like down to earth, just wanting to help you like pursue what you want in STEM and trying to get you into the field of STEM and make it a little bit less intimidating especially for minorities because it is very hard for us to get into that career path um but yeah um and it also gets you it allows you to build a community in a sense and it helps you network i just know that it it's really just meant to help you with like everything that you're usually clueless about with resumes um fly-ins colleges how to choose your college college applications what major you want to be in what to expect, internships, all that fun stuff. We were given the opportunity to choose an extracurricular class and you would be given different ranges. There would be like electronics and there was machine learning and there was robotics. You would be put into one if you wanted to explore through it or, and like when you were in that class, you were just like, wow, like, I can't believe I just did this. Like you would make a speaker or you'd make a robot autonomously move from like side to side. And it was just like absolutely insane. I would say really fortified um, me becoming an engineer. Uh, and we'd also have the opportunity to look at other career paths or like design labs or research facilities and be able to go in and see what they would do on a daily basis. It was just absolutely insane the opportunities we were given. Since it was a like highly selective program, it was there were only a small group of people who got accepted into it. And I think that's what made having a community amongst these people even better. There was 80, but it was still within a six week period of span, you were able to talk to each and every one of them and have some sort of like friendship form. But honestly, it was a lot of fun. Um, you were given a lot of opportunity to venture out with these friends that you would make and like explore Boston if you wanted to. You were able to like have the freedom to go wherever you wanted as long as you told your chaperone, of course. You can't just like go off into another city. Um, I thought that was really cool. So like social life, easy. That was like the easiest part. Everyone didn't want to do schoolwork. They just wanted to socialize outside of their dorms all the time. The dorm was really nice. Uh, it was really randomized when it came to whether you would have a roommate or not. I didn't have a roommate, but others would have like three roommates or two roommates or just one roommate. It just really depended on like which dorm you were put in. Um, the dorms were nice. There was a curfew. Did we follow it? No, <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, the food, we were given an $80 little food card and it would replenish every week and you could use it at any restaurant around MIT, or you can use it at the dining hall. A lot of people would eat at the dining hall. The dining hall food was really good, in my opinion. It was like chicken tenders and like macaroni, and I, 
it, it was heaven to me. And they would even have like a little ice cream bar and I thought that was cool. Um, so the food, the social life, the dining was pretty great. And we would also have like family meetings once a week where um, it was just like all 80 of us and we'd like be in like a room and we just like talk to each other or we'd also have like break from tutoring because I, I don't know what they're called like breakouts like once a week where you had to like put all your books down and like not study anymore and just like be around with each other and sit with each other and once a week we would have a social activity whether it would be like going to the beach or having like a scavenger hunt or having like a barbecue for the fourth of july it was really cool i think social life there was pretty fun definitely overwhelming compared to high school courses but maybe that was just for my high school because i know other kids were doing just fine with the workload but it was definitely hard you would have to put a lot of time into what you were studying, I would say. The best parts were the weekly social activities because, you know, you didn't have to do schoolwork and you were just like having fun with a bunch of friends. I would say that was definitely one of the greatest parts. The worst part, I wouldn't say this is the worst part, it's just more of a learning curve. Um, being able to take the workload that they give you and um, actually time manage and be able to efficiently like get everything done because we weren't given a lot of time in the day. We'd be gone at like nine in the morning and we wouldn't be back in our dorms until like 6 p.m. And even then we would have office hours that we needed to attend and then truly we would only have time to do homework starting at like midnight. And also, depending on how far you lived from MIT, I guess the distance from home, I did get a little homesick. So I would just say, not necessarily the worst part, but something to get used to. We were connected to admission officers. They would give us um, once a week lectures about what to expect with the college applications. They would talk about the Common App, not only the MIT app, we are also given access to the MIT financial aid advisors and they would help you with like the whole financial process of MIT and other colleges. Um, a lot of our TAs were from MIT and um, other nice colleges. So I would say that also counts. And the professors that we were given were also in the community of MIT. Some of them were actually professors there. Some of them um, did their graduate there and they decided to study over the summer. So I do say we did connect a lot with the community over there and either way it was over the summer and I'm pretty sure some students were taking summer classes and so at the rec there would probably be like actual MIT students. It was free so I guess it was worth the cost. <laughs> it was absolutely free, dining, food, everything paid for. The only thing that you had to pay for was the transportation to Boston and back, but even then I found sponsors. In the application, you're given like um, a PSAT option to put in your score or SAT option. Don't worry about your scores. I don't think that's what they're necessarily looking for. In the end, they don't want like the smartest kids. They just want to be able to bring opportunities to the kids that I think needed the most that have high academic backgrounds. So your score, your test score isn't everything. So don't be so panicked about it. I do say that the essays are very important, especially since it's very limited in words. So every word should be impactful and truthful to who you are as a person. Don't pretend to be anything else because I feel like they know. <laughs> they will know if you're bluffing or trying to be like, oh, I won a Nobel Peace Prize when I was like five, you know, like that's a way extreme example of it, but just be truthful to yourself, be honest with them. As long as they can see that you're passionate about it and you're willing to work hard, you have a good chance of getting in. Mm -hmm.